This morning, Vikings, we're going to do a quick review on etiquette and manners to get us ready for the military ball. So this is a lesson we, at least with the ones we covered previously for the upperclassmen, you've done it in years past. So this will be a quick, well, a relatively quick review. All right. First off, think about some of the habits you have um, and think about what you already know as far as etiquette and manners, being polite to other people, being respectful. So if you want to sketch and uh, do some quick notes, you know, why are social etiquette and manners important, you can go ahead and do that. Or just think through that process. Why, why does it matter? Okay, since we're doing virtual learning today, I uh, cannot actually do this in the classroom. Uh, in the past, what I've done is put a bunch of Skittles in a bowl, and you have a fork and a knife, no spoon, uh, to try to eat as many as you can. Or the other way of doing it is to uh, put on mittens. We have some uh, old gloves back in the uh, supply room that you try to use those to get the little Skittles and uh, get them into your mouth. Very challenging thing to do. So, you know, we talk etiquette. It's a fun little activity, but it uh, gets you to realize that there's certain things that work, certain things that don't, uh, what would be appropriate, and how do we resource that. Okay. Think about what you already know of rules of conduct and courtesy when you're in public. Now, how well do you do with that? Because uh, in the school here, uh, that's not always followed. For a formal occasion like our military ball, uh, there's going to be some very high expectations on behavior, how you treat each other, how you interact with others, uh, special guests, um, the your fellow cadets, all that really matters. Uh, the parents, the chaperones, guest speaker, uh, that will all matter. Okay, so what is etiquette? This will be on your quiz. Is it formal English food? No, it's a French word anyway. Behaviors based on rules of polite society. That yeah, sounds pretty good. Proper way to wear a military uniform? No. Uh, parent support for public education? No. B is our answer here. Okay, so whatever we talk about here in this lesson is going to be, the ultimate test is going to be at the military ball itself. Um, since we are doing a dining in this year as opposed to dining out, which is the format. You will not have any guests there. Again, that's due to COVID. Uh, but the dining in allows us to um, change the format a little bit and we'll have a little bit more fun uh, and, and address the etiquette piece of it because there will be penalty if you are not following correct etiquette is that you'll be sent to the grog bowl. Uh, you'll learn about what that is the night of the military ball. Um, if you break etiquette for some reason and um, the penalty, if you will, as opposed to writing an essay or doing something like that, um, is that you have to go up to the grog bowl and fill a, we'll have a little tiny cup there for you, and you have to put some of the grog into that and then consume it. Um, won't tell you what the ingredients are in the grog bowl. Um, you may or may not like it. Um, I don't know. We're going to do a test with the upperclassmen here. Uh, next week because we have to sample the grog, make sure it is going to be appropriate, um, and make sure that nobody actually gags and throws up. So that would be uh, slightly awkward, I think. Um, but, again, goes to traditions. Uh, for example, just so you don't get too grossed out, I will tell you one of the ingredients uh, from the Raider team, uh, they're going to have a combat boot, and they will have a little piece that they say, and then they will, you know, talks about the, the sand and grit from uh, the training for the Raiders, and they will pour sand into the grog. In reality, it will be a mix of white sugar and brown sugar, so it'll look like sand, and it will actually be in a clean cup inside, stuffed down inside the boot. Um, so we're not actually putting sand into the grog. Uh, don't tell your parents when, uh, when they see you guys drink this stuff. Just let them think it's real sand. Have a little fun. Okay. Anyway, learning objectives. Uh, analyze etiquette manners, uh, all the stuff we normally go through, talk dining in versus dining out. Um, and then, again, because of COVID, we are doing this year's military ball in a dining, or the cadet ball in a dining in format. Learn what does that mean, um, not just the grog, but there's other factors that go into that. Uh, talk about all that RSVP. Uh, you guys are supposed to be returning your forms uh, actually tomorrow. Um, uh, so we can confirm uh, what your meal choice is, because that's one of those things that has to be 
selected. And for those of you that have not done any fundraising, you're going to have to pay for the ticket. Um, again, there is one last fundraising opportunity, but if you've not contacted the boosters, um, you know, you, that, that window will close here very shortly. Define the word etiquette. Take a moment, think what that is. Uh, we've talked about some uh, since we're doing remote, can't do the teams. Just think through what does the word etiquette mean? What do you think it means? Think about how you introduce yourself to someone or inter how you introduce someone to other people, to your friends or your compatriots, something like that. Um, we'll be, because of COVID, we can't really do the handshake the way we would normally do. So there, I'm not sure whether we'll do a full receiving line, uh, but that is the purpose of going through how do you introduce people? What is the process? What's the procedure? So uh, you should have already done the reading in the book, uh, the virtual textbook, page, let's see, lesson four is page 67, and I'll make sure that's available to the upperclassmen as well. Um, but, but take a look at the reading and think through what's the order for the receiving line. What would it normally be? Again, dining in, we're not going to have guests there. Um, so right here, host is first, uh, then you and your spouse, then the host spouse, and then the company commanders, their spouse, or guests. But again, this year, we're not going to have much of that. Um, so, well, learn it, and we'll apply it to next year. All right. General rule when making introductions, introduce juniors to seniors in age and rank. Is that correct? Is that true or false? That is true. Introduce the junior person to the senior person. Okay. Which of the following should you do when shaking hands? Do you look for someone to whom you can introduce them while shaking hands? Or do you stand at attention and only offer your hand when the other person puts their hand out? Do you maintain eye contact with the person whose hand you are shaking? Or do you look at the other person's name badge so you know their name? What would be the right thing to do here? And I think the C would be your best answer. Uh, check the name beforehand just in case. But again, the way, the way we would normally do the receiving line, the adjutant is actually at the beginning of the line to do the introductions of people as they come through the door. Okay, which rule should you follow to receive awards and recognition? Do you offer the right hand to receive the award, or do you offer the left hand to receive the award? Uh, do you wait to be instructed on how to receive it? Do you salute prior to receiving the award? So here, the correct way to do it would be, be offer the left hand to receive the award, and then shake with the right hand. <clears throat> Think about situations you'll encounter. Um, and not just the military ball, but we will have an awards, full-blown awards ceremony June 4th. Um, some of you are graduating this year. You're going to have to go, you're, you're going to finally have that opportunity to walk the stage. Um, you'll shake the superintendent's hand, you, the principal, uh, usually a couple other key folks, whether it's school board members or other folks in the, the community, but you'll be um, receiving your diploma. So assuming that we're, again, Given COVID restrictions, maybe we'll have, I don't know, hand sanitizer as you walk off the stage. I don't, I don't know. Um, but there's a, an opportunity and expectation here that you'll be doing some introductions and, you know, doing it in front of your parents, your peers, uh, and your family, uh, and a chance to be proud of you. So make sure you sh show your stuff. Uh, give them reason to be proud. Okay. Um, we don't have the animation for this, for the dining etiquette. The, um, there is a piece and an exercise we're going to do in class, and when we're in person next week, uh, I've actually I'm going to have place settings available to us, and you guys going to be part of your review. You're actually going to set the table how it would be appropriate for a formal dining situation. So take a look at the picture there. I'll, I'll put other things in the, uh, the under the lesson if you look at some other materials to help uh, prepare you for that. Okay, uh, you know, here, this will help you out a little bit. You know, the salad fork to the outside, then the dinner fork, and the dessert fork goes up on top. So, you know, why would you have so many different things? That, that, these are the things that, that come into play. Depending on what meal we actually have at the, the military ball, um, you may or may not see that many. I know you'll at least see a salad fork and a dinner fork. Um, the way they're doing the dessert, because it'll be a big, cake with the uh, JRTC symbol on it. Um, 
I'm not sure if they'll have a separate fork for that or if that'll come out with the, the plate when that is delivered. Uh, we'll see. Where should you place a piece of silverware when you are not using it? Do you leave it on the tablecloth? Do you put it back on the table in the same position? Do you put the tip resting on the plate and the handle on the table? Do you put it across the bread plate? Or do you put it separated across the top of your plate? What would be the best answer here? Uh, that would be separated across the top of your plate. Good old bell. Where should you place your napkin if you must leave the table during dinner? Do you do A to the right of your plate, B on your chair, C on the flo floor below your chair, I think not, or D above your plate? Uh, where would it be? There, on your chair be the appropriate place, okay? Uh, it basically doesn't go back on the table anywhere. Okay. Think about proper dining table manners. Um, I think I'll have the upper class and give you some examples and talk you through some things. Uh, what would be appropriate? What do you talk about at the dinner table? What do you not talk about at the dinner table? Again, the whole idea is to make it a pleasant, enjoyable experience. Don't get into any political discussions. Don't um, <clears throat> don't get terribly animated. If, if you happen to just talk weather or sports scores or something, you know, you just small talk. Um, make sure you don't get overly animated or start saying, uh, oh, why do you like that team? Or, you know, don't, don't be rude to each other. Be polite and just enjoy yourselves politely and quietly. Okay. Exercise two, I'll post that for you uh, and have you fill that out. Uh, and we'll actually take a look at a, a little game here with that. Okay. I need to jump out of the presentation mode. We'll stick that on the uh, team site. This will be your assignment to you know either write the name or at least put the number at each appropriate setting for what's on the table. And then again, the practical piece that we'll see next week uh, when you actually have to set a table right here in the classroom. All right. Think about how comfortable you'd be at a formal dinner gathering. Now, how many of you sit down and have dinner with your family every night at the dinner table and actually do the place settings and all that? Um, we definitely do it every Sunday afternoon. Um, usually have uh, my in-laws come in and sometimes some other family members usually fill the table. Um, but to do that every single night, yeah, it's usually not quite a formal dinner gathering. Um, some of you may still do that. Uh, uh, but you know, as, you know, as far as what are your alternatives? Uh, hopefully you at least have some experience at, at various times having a formal dinner at home. Think about a time when you were formally invited to an event. I know some of you are on sports teams and usually you have a, an awards banquet uh, at the end of the season. Um, again, COVID this year makes things a little more of a challenge, but uh, hopefully some of you have been to something like that or maybe you've been to uh, somebody's wedding. Uh, and the dinner that goes with that. There, there's you've probably been some sort of formal event you've been to. Um, if it's your first one, ask more questions, get to know, you know, and then just lay low, be quiet if, if you're concerned about anything. But talk to us and talk to the upper class, and they're going to help you out. All right, what goes on a formal invitation? So we'll go through some of that stuff. I'm going to give you an animation here to let you take a look at talk through some of the, the dress um, and the invitation process. Oops, where is that? Uh, I must have closed it. So let's go back to here. When receiving a social invitation, often it will include the type of dress you should wear at the event. However, sometimes just the title of the event will provide a clue. If the invitation is for a formal event, then the general rule is that male cadets wear service dress or semi-formal service dress. A male guest can also wear suit or tuxedo. For female cadets, service dress may be expected. For other formal occasions... Okay, since we're not doing any guests, I'll stop the video there. So, uh, bottom line for... Um, 
male cadets, you'll wear a white shirt and bow tie. Again, you'll have to provide the white shirt. Boosters do have a handful. And then uh, bow tie, you know, I know some of the band students already have bow ties, black bow tie. Uh, we have some here available in the classroom or the boosters uh, that you can rent for the event. Um, and if, you know, what it, the, I think it's, I have to double check the boosters, I think it's two fifty, two dollars fifty cents. You can rent the bow tie, then as long as you return it, you'll get the two fifty back. Uh, you are welcome to purchase your own, however. Uh, for the female cadets, your choice of whether to wear the slacks or the skirt. Uh, if you do not have a skirt already, we, we're getting close on time. I know the CSM and S4 have been working on that to get those that want to be in the skirts into those, uh, as well as the pumps. Um, you'll have to provide your own pantyhose and female cadets. Um, you still wear the neck tab, but also a white shirt, just like the males, a white button down shirt. Okay. What is the first rule in social correspondence? So candor, sincerity, simplicity, conciseness. Uh, I'd argue that all those are part of it, but which one is the very first rule, and that would be sincerity. It is polite to RSVP. What is RSVP first off? And again, that was in the book. Respond to the play is please reply to an inv invitation within how many days? What is appropriate? You guys have all gotten the letters that went out to parents uh, that uh, RSVP, uh, which includes your meal choice. So we need that because we have to get that to the caterer. So what is the normal time frame? It's two to three days. Uh, we've extended that a little bit because of the way the class schedule was, and then with school being closed on Monday, that kind of threw a kink in it. So, again, we should be getting those RSVPs uh, tomorrow. After the formal event is over, to whom should you write a thank you note? Um, you being, it depends on where you're at. If you're just a cadet that attended versus the uh, actual staff, uh, there's a little bit different choice here. Uh, the staff will definitely be going out to the sponsoring organization, special guests, as well as the host for the evening or our special guest. Um, for the individual cadets, it'd be appropriate to thank uh, the battalion commander and, and in this case, probably the booster since they're sponsoring most of the event. You do have to pay or have participated in fundraising uh, towards the ticket, but there's a lot of extra cost that's actually covered by the boosters. The, the, the meal tickets only cover the plate, uh, not the extra things, the DJ, the uh, uh, the cake. There's special pieces. That, that the actual cost of the event is, well, a fair amount more than just the plate cost. Okay, think about responding to a social invitation. Uh, you could do this, you know, write a formal or informal scenario. We've already done that. You know, we're using the military ball, and again, online, we can't really do this one. So take a look at the reflection. Uh, I do have some questions for you. Um, we'll just do a quick review here uh, to go through, and then these will be on your quiz on Friday. Okay, you shouldn't what? or take control of the conversation. Is it sorbet, repast, protocol, or monopolize? And uh, if you recall definitions, we, again, we've talked about this before, is do not monopolize the conversation, okay? See if you remember what sorbet is. I remember that being, uh, some folks uh, having fun with that particular word. Okay, a formal military dinner for military members only is known as what? Military members only. This will be the, what we're actually doing for this occasion, and that's a dining in. Uh, normally, our spring military ball is actually a dining out where you are allowed to have guests and we have family members and uh, presenters and all that stuff. Uh, we'll be much more limited for this occasion, uh, but at least we're able to do it uh, despite the challenges of COVID. All right, blank is a code of behavior or courtesy based on rules of a polite society. That would be etiquette. Remember, we talked about what was the definition of etiquette at the beginning. A blank is a group of people, including the host and honored guests, who stand in line and individually welcome guests attending a social function. Uh, not sure how we'll be able to do that this year. We may forego it for this occasion, but normally there would be a receiving line. That would be the, what we would do. You'd actually introduce, be introduced to the guest of honor and the, the chain of command. Blank are name cards for a formal dinner. That would be place cards. They'll be at your place setting. The boosters are also going to have those based on your meal choice color coded so that the servers are able to you know put the appropriate meal uh, entree anyway in front of you. This is place cards. 
If you do not normally speak a blank or flowery language, you should not write in that way in a thank you note. That would be stilted, a word we don't commonly use. A formal military dinner to which non-military guests are invited is known as what? That would be the dining out, which was what the military ball normally is, just not this year. Okay, blank are widespread customs accepted as socially correct ways of acting. Blank are widespread customs, that would be manners. Okay. Military officer, the school principal, or government official, such as a senator or mayor, are blank at a JRTC cadet ball or dining in event. What would be the word here? And uh, we've have had many of these folks attend in the past. That would be dignitaries. Again, it will be much more reduced this year because of COVID. The response a host receives from you that tells them you will attend or not attend a function is what? <clears throat> That's that old respond, s'il vous plaît, in French phrase for please reply. All right, that concludes today's lesson. Um, again, we'll do a quiz on that, and then next week we'll actually do a formal place setting. Um, and then your true event, and it is a graded event, guys, uh, is the actual military ball itself. Should be easy points. Um, but again, that's consider that your exam for etiquette. All right, in that case, have a great day, and we will see you soon.